I'm going to compute the surface area of a conical frustum, uh, which is basically what you would better know as a, a light shade. So it's the thing I've drawn in in red here, this area. We're not interested in the area of the circle at the top or at the bottom, we're just interested in this red area. So let me give you some measurements of this light shade first. Uh, the top circle is uh, going to have radius Q and the bottom circle is going to have radius R. Um, but we need to know slightly more, we need to know how high the thing is, but instead of giving you the height, I'm going to give you this distance, which I'm calling D, which is the distance between the top circle and the bottom circle as measured along the surface of the frustum. Okay, given those measurements, we have a formula for the area of the frustum, which I'm now going to prove, which says that the area is pi times D times Q plus R. So how do we prove this? Well, the key geometrical insight is that we can actually cut the frustum um, along this blue line here um, and lay it out flat on a table. You may have done this with a, a light shade. I certainly have. Um, and the result looks like this. Here's one I made earlier. So here you can see the red area goes to this segment of an annulus. And the annulus lies between these two circles. So let me colour the circles in. So the inner circle, which I'm going to colour green, is what the top circle of radius Q folds out onto after we've cut and laid out. And this outer purple circle or segment of circle is what the bottom circle folds out onto after we've cut and folded. So you'll notice that while this was a circle before, the green circle, it's now uh, a green segment of a circle, which means that this radius, the radius of this inner circle, which I'm going to call P, is, is slightly bigger than, than Q. So that, that's a bit small, let me write it bigger. P is the radius of this circle, and it's slightly bigger than Q. And similarly, uh, the radius of this this outer circle, well, it's it's P plus D, because this blue length is D. We haven't changed that by cutting and folding out, um, and that's going to be slightly bigger than R. These inequalities don't matter, I'm just pointing it out. Okay, um, so let's uh, let's define some numbers. So we've already defined a number here, that, right, the, the radius of this inner circle P. We're going to have to compute that because we don't know what it is. We also need to compute F. So F is the fraction of the annulus subtended by this funny shape. By which I mean, you know, the full annulus would go all the way around this circle. We're actually only going some of the way around the circle, not quite three quarters. So uh, we'll get some fraction here. So how do we compute these numbers P and F in terms of what we already know, namely Q, R, D? Well, we start by comparing things we know. So what we know is that the circumference of this top green circle is 2 pi q. And when we cut and unfold, we don't change that length. So the area, or the, the length of this green segment is also 2 pi q. So that tells us that if we go all the way around this inner circle, we pick up the circumference 2 pi p. If we only go a fraction f around, then we'll actually pick up 2 pi q. Right? Go all the way around, we pick up 2 pi p. Just go a fraction f around, we pick up 2 pi q. And similarly, we know that this purple circle has circumference 2 pi r. So this purple segment has length 2 pi r. We didn't change anything. 
that tells us that 2 pi times the radius of the outer circle, which is p plus d, the outer circle has radius p plus d. Um, <clears throat> this, this is the circumference of the outer circle. If we go f around that, sorry, let's multiply by f, um, and then we'll pick up this 2 pi r, the length of that segment. Okay, so we don't need these 2 pi's lying around. We can divide out by 2 pi everywhere. And we just get PF equals Q. And this one, let's write it out in full. P times F plus D times F equals R. Okay, but we have P times F here. And we have P times F here. So let's substitute this Q in for this P times F. So we have Q plus D times F equals R. Okay, so let's write some implication signs in here. This is how the argument goes. Okay, now we know Q, we know D, and we know R. And we need to work out F. But we can do that now. We get F equals, well, R minus Q. divided by d to get rid of this d right so how do we work out p well we know p times f equals q so p f equals q implies that p times well this is what f is r minus q over d equals q and rearranging, so we multiply by d, and we divide by r minus q, and we get p equals q times d over r minus q. So these are our two equations, two vital equations, telling us our unknown quantities in terms of our known quantities. Okay, so what about the area? We need to work out the red area. Okay, so we know that the area of this frustum is equal to the area of this segment of this annulus. Because again, we didn't change anything when we cut and laid out. So the area of the frustum equals the area of the annulus. And the area of the annulus equals a fraction f. Sorry, the area of the segment of the annulus equals a, fragment, uh, a fraction f of the area of the whole annulus. Let me colour in red the areas we're interested in. So this area equals this area equals F times this area. Okay, but this is F times, well, the area of this big outer disc minus the area of this small inner disc. We just cut out a little disc. But then this is f times, well, the area of a disk is pi times the radius squared. So in this case, pi times p plus d squared, because that's the radius of this big disk, minus pi times p squared, because p is the radius of the inner disk. And we can multiply out, we take out the factor of pi from both of these. We get pi times f times, well, expand the binomial, we get p squared plus d squared plus 2pd minus p squared, and the p squareds cancel. We take out a factor of d, pi times d times f times what's left, well, d plus 2p. Now we know that, let's just recall, f equals r minus q over d, p equals q times d over r minus q. Let's just write that out again. f equals r minus q over d, p equals q d over r minus q. So substitute these two expressions into this one. And we get pi d f times d uh, 
plus, oh, sorry, let, let's multiply this out. So R minus Q over D. And then in the brackets, we have D plus QD over R minus Q. So now multiply this into this and this, and I get pi D times, well, R minus Q times D over D is just R minus Q. And this term is R minus Q over R minus Q times D over D plus Q. Ah, sorry, there's a factor of two I missed out here. This is how these things go. You've got to be careful. So plus 2Q. And now Q, so 2Q minus Q is Q. So we get pi D times R plus Q. Which is the formula we wanted to begin with.